When last you guys were here, you all were in the city of Bremen, where you had dealt with the uh, monster of uh, Mare Dwelgma, uh, Mary the Lake Monster, by skinning it and riding it on a boat back to uh, back to the Speaker of Town. You had been hired initially by Torga Icevein to find a killer that she believed was traveling along with a band of traveling merchants named Torgas. Along the way, while trying to find this individual named Sefik Keltro, who apparently Tor who apparently uh, Hillen believes is killing people with ice daggers through the heart somehow, um, you got sidetracked in some other side quests. Uh, you were besieged to rescue or to find missing fishermen in the city of East Haven that remains undone. The mead from Good Mead had stopped flowing as Verbeegs had been attacking the city and raided them. The town of Dugan's Hole was besieged by winter wolves uh, that were the former companions of a frost giant who had been previously slain and had been awakened and spoke like humans. They had been kidnapping people and forcing the town to give them food. Uh, in the city of Bryn Shander, you encountered some dwarves who were attacked by a yeti on the plains while they were hauling their iron ingots down from the Dwarven Vale to uh, Black Iron's Blades, where they were to receive payment for the iron from the Dwarven Mines. Uh, you retrieved the uh, iron ingots that were being taken by a band of, uh, I think, uh, goblins, and then encountered said yeti that had killed Ubak, one of the Dwarven companions, and you were paid in valuable gems. You'd heard rumors that... Uh, the, uh, almost all of the fish had stopped and food was running scarce because the monster of Lake Mare Dweldwen, uh, that had been sighted in Bremen had been scaring the fishermen from Mare Dweldwen off and the missing fishermen and the missing people looking for the fishermen out of East Haven had prevented fish, fish from being caught in that lake as well. Uh, in the city of Targos, you, uh, uh, while traveling to Bremen, uh, you found that uh, Torgas was not there, but you did learn about uh, several things. The speaker of town was somewhat of a shady chap that uh, seemed to be engaged in some nefarious plotting. Uh, an individual that was the um, a candidate for speaker of, uh, of good mead turned up uh, dead somehow. And you got the sense that potentially the speaker there was somehow involved in some nefarious dealings. Um, you also learned about a, uh, a missing uh, wilderness guide whose dog returned running to town to his, uh, to his husband, who uh, told you that boy would never have left uh, Garrett's side. And uh, I think it was Keegan was his name. And... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, he told you that he, he didn't have any money to pay and he couldn't bear to let go of, uh, of Boy, but he did tell you that out of Kerr Konig is where they were uh, leaving. They were going to gather supplies in the town of Kerr Konig and then they were going to head out towards Kelvin's Cairn. He was leading a group of adventurers there. Of course, you did never catch what the adventurers were looking for there, but there was a group of adventurers that was trying to summit the mountain. Uh, you decided to double back to Bremen and deal with the sea monster. And there you did by turning it into killing it and turning it into a boat and riding it back to town and collecting said reward that you hustled out of the speaker. Uh, while there, you learn while in the town of Bremen, you learned another interesting fact: the uh, local barkeep at or local innkeeper at the inn called the Buried Treasures, her son had gone missing, basically, after he'd gone on a rescue mission for uh, Dorbelguff Shalescar, the uh, speaker of town who you encountered, who was a little bit of a befuddled old man that agreed to pay you for the uh, slaying of said monster. He'd gotten lost in the woods. And then Hur Hurwar, uh, the uh, son to uh, to Cora Malfoon, had gone missing after had disappeared basically he had found while looking for Dorbelguff uh, a uh, strange shard that after he found it sort of turned into kind of like Gollum my precious and uh, personality sort of changed and shortly thereafter some what she called devil people that you took to be tieflings appeared and they uh, 
led him off and she said they would that they were he went with them willingly they were taking him to their castle the only castles that she knew of were in care uh Dineval and in care Conig. one of them was a uh, uh destroyed castle and another one was a uh like built castle but she didn't recall which city had uh had what you encountered torgas in bremen where you had somewhat of a tense uh conversation with them after you had met Sefik Keltro in the bar at night and made somewhat tense conversation with him a couple of people had uh you bought some dogs off of uh dogs in a sled off of uh, Torga and then you went back to the uh to the buried treasures to have breakfast after breakfast you found that uh Torgas had left town as they were packing up previously, and they were just outside of your sight, but very easy to follow their tracks. You tracked them all the way back to the city of Targos, where the tracks clearly entered into the city, and you lost the tracks as the streets became cobblestone, basically, and, you know, became like city streets. Uh, you went to the other side, which you found to be the guard currently not standing at the gate, but had sort of gone on patrol as the guard is... The guard seems to sort of walk back and forth around the gate, you know, just patrolling. And the gate was currently unguarded, but he said that uh, no one had passed through that he'd seen on his watch. Uh, you didn't know if they had slipped by, if they had gone by, or if they were still in the city. And you elected to try to get out ahead of them, heading towards Termalane, which is where they had told you they were headed eventually. You made your way out into the uh, wilderness path which is really a road but really not much more than a dog sled path in reality and there a critical failed roll led you off the path where you encountered a ice troll that was sleeping under a snowbank uh, and he after you disturbed his sleep raised up several uh, ice methods or frost methods that uh made your day a bad day and uh you have just defeated said uh ice tr frost troll or ice troll and that's where we find you all now the uh day is getting long and uh it is getting uh cold and uh starting to get dark outside and i'll take you there now didn't we start making a camp i distinctly remember making a fire out of troll lundies uh sure you were trying to ignite you're trying to ignite troll yes. lundies i remember that now as well because we yeah we had we had yeah, some like blood awful smell yeah we'd taken we'd taken the the sled and sort of built kind of anchored it up between some rocks and then put some hides over it and sort of made a tent out of it. Kind of. Yeah, it's starting to get dark out here and you're realizing that you have a couple of choices, basically. You could press through the dark and try to find the dog trail again or and drive through the night and you would clearly arrive at Termalane after dark or make camp here where you are in this desolate wilderness. And it seems like you have decided to wedge the sled up against a hill and where do you want the sled? I can put it. Somebody who I was going to I was going to wedge it between sort of on the on the image there's like these two sort of slopes. And I was going to kind of wedge it up that way so that it sort of stack up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then we could kind of on its side and then we could sort of create shelter out of it. Sure. Something like that lean, like a lean to yeah. where you can yeah. lay some. Uh, the frost troll's body is still there. Uh, you've lit a little bit of a flame on a piece of cloth that it had, but it certainly is not much. And I'm going to give you with uh, without any real insight that the loincloth that you've lit will be consumed by the fire within a rather short period of time unless additional fuel is found. Um, you do have your flamethrower uh, uh, 
robot for a bit more. The hour is about to be up, Leonard. So, uh, if do you we, have any other thing to do with uh, that flamethrower, you may do so. Do we have ninety-eight point. degree Kenny? Uh, Kenny do. has not. Kenny has ninety-eight degree Kenny. Uh, how far does that radiate from you? Uh, fifteen foot radius. Uh, so it's ninety-eight feet. degrees within a fifteen feet of you. Uh. Oh, I just Googled thermal cube without DMD and got Amazon trying to sell me one. Ooh. Yeah. 95 degrees within 15 feet. Okay. So everybody can sort of huddle near you and you become like the world's worst Lehman's tiny hut. Yeah. I would rule that if you get caught in blowing snow and blizzard, I don't care if you're next to a 98 degree zone, it's still bad. It's are the are the dogs still alive? Did we mm -hmm. save the dogs? I don't. You remember. saved the dogs. The dogs were up front and they got attacked by the ice troll, but you've saved the dogs. You have two dogs that are sort of licking and they look hungry. Right. We got we got dog food, but troll me. do they want troll yep. meat? I don't know. Are you cutting up and killing a troll? I'm gonna see if they want some troll meat. Uh, as you cut it up, it smells horrific. Uh, you've done lots of necrotic damage to it, and pieces of it are falling off, and it's like dripping necros yuck. And it also just look, looks horrendous. Like, if this was in video game parlance, this would be questionable meat. They don't have to eat it, but it might be a mastiff delicacy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the dogs will eat some. It turns your stomach, though, to think about. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm not eating it. All right. So are you guys I'm making camp? So are you guys making camp here, uh, and you're just going to wait till the flame burns out, or and then try to huddle under the lean-to next to the warm robot? Or are you going to try to light another fire I'm, to keep the boogers away? I mean, so I'm, I'm I'm wondering how badly do we need this sled? And is it more important than, say, breaking down the sled for... A well, bit of fire that's work? what I was about to say. The only thing I can light on fire is the sled. Yeah. Unless you scout out and find something. Yeah, I think that's how you get dead. I think... Yeah. That is, that is how we get Michelangelo in the party. <laughs> okay. So you're chopping up the sled then? I get, we're not really using it to carry anything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of you is easily able to hack up the sled and it ignites into a nice... Uh, I am going to, if it's acceptable, keep the uh, rails for the sled. Sure. Because I feel like I Piece can make a platform out of some trees. Yeah. But you build like, a new sled. I could build a new sled. You're an artificer. Yeah, you, you, you've now seen what a sled looks like. And if you have the metal rails, yeah, you. if you keep the nails and stuff and you had enough time, yeah, I, you're at, you absolutely could build a sled. It would not be a matter of a roll. It would just be a matter of the time to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just spend some of my rest time pillaging for the non-wooden pieces of the sled. Okay. So we have a camp set up. Uh, the night is falling. Are you guys setting watches? Your your flamethrower has disappeared. Yep. What is the night watch situation here? You can take first. So watch. just as a point of information, um, I have a hunting trap mm -hmm. that I'm not quite sure. Sort of. You is that just like the, the the sort of cartoon like yes. bear steps into it, claws? It can on be how it can be however you want it to be. Hunting trap. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. my intention was to perhaps put the hunting trap out kind of over here. Okay. Um, in case anything tries to sneak up on us from that. So you're, you're trying to set up like a... Like, like a, a booby trap. Like a booby trap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can either draw that on the screen, or uh, I, I might have one, actually. Okay, here. Uh, here, I'll just put it. Like, 
I think I have some traps. There we go. That'll work. There. We'll just put it right there. How about that? Here's a bear trap. Okay, that's good. I don't know how to get rid of my circle now. I got it. Okay. It's drawing. That way I can make the bear trap a little bigger so that it's more obviously a bear trap. Oh, here. I got it. All right. There's a bear trap. Okay, there we go. All right, perfect. Okay. And you guys are, since you're burning the sled, you're no longer huddling underneath it. You're just sort of going to cuddle next to uh, Granite Gut or next to... Uh, not Granite Guts, I'm sorry. Next Leonard. to uh, Leonard. Yeah. I'll take okay. first watch. First watch to Harkus. Who's second watch? I need four watches. I can do second. Second to Granite Guts. Who's third? I'll do third. Third to Guitara. I'll do fourth. All right. First watch passes. Nay happens. Uh, second watch. Who is number two? Me. I'm rolling physical dice so that you can't see what it rolls. Okay. Uh, you were also in the clear. Who was three? I was third. Yatara. Rolled off the table. Hang on. Ah. Uh, Yatara. As you are, uh, giving a watch, you, um, you sort of hear something faint in the distance that kind of uh, disturbs you just a little bit. You hear a, a sound. It kind of sounds something like... Kind of like that. And uh, you don't see anything, but it's really, uh, really very dark outside of the circle of fire that you have lit on the sled. Uh, I will say that in the sky, uh, during first watch, the same aurora, bright aurora that you guys have only seen when you've been camping outside at night, just fills the sky. So there is some light from the aurora above. Jeff, there was, I don't know, four sessions ago, there was a creepy encounter that I believe Yatara had. Yes. Uh, do I, since I'm sort of staring out into the nothingness, uh, does this seem or feel familiar to that? Or is this... It's interesting. You're able to perceive but can't interact. Right. Okay. Uh, you don't hear anything. All right. <laughs> Can I tell which way the sound's coming from? Uh, roll perception. Sure can't. Are you uh, just staying put? Or are you doing anything? I'm actually going to, since I don't know which direction it's coming from, I'm going to climb up the hill a short distance, not away from the light of the fire, but maybe just a little bit higher to see if I could see anything. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Am I able to tell anything differently? Uh, as you climb up the uh, hill, uh, you don't uh, see anything obvious. Uh, the sound is seems to be growing more and more faint. It's Until growing. you uh, almost can't really even hear it or perceive it anymore. And it's you're listening and pain. looking for a short period of time, and it seems to be fading away and then 
nearly gone. I'm back down the hill. Yep. And uh, nothing else happens for the rest of your watch. Uh, who is uh, fourth watch? Leonard. Leonard. Uh, you saw Yatara get up and uh, walk around, but you didn't hear anything or perceive anything. I'm going to tell Leonard about what I heard. Just to keep a, an eye out that I heard something in the distance, but couldn't really describe what it was. How would you describe the sound that you heard? You heard it. I would, I would, I would describe it to him as faint and ominous, but did not sound like a, a creature that I am familiar with. I like how it would be potentially the moans of a woman, and it's a creature that Yatar is not familiar with. <clears throat> Clearly. <laughs> All right. Um, Leonard. Uh, nothing else happens for your the remainder of your watch. All right. And uh, morning arises. I can't take the night <clears throat> vision off. Well, maybe I can without refreshing the page. Maybe I can. We'll see. Try this. Good. Morning has come. Uh, there are clouds in the sky. And uh, the wind has picked up a good bit. It's almost as if uh, you can you get the sense that a storm is on the horizon again. You were trying to make your way to the town of Termalane. I'll show you the map. And I'll give you the sense of where... Well, I'll tell you what. Roll me survival somebody to get a sense for where you're at. It doesn't have to be the person that's leading the party, but just whoever wants to get the sense of where you went wrong. I can do it. Go ahead, roll it. Go ahead, roll. Uh, uh, you yeah. are on the route to Tamerlane, and you get the sense that instead of going further north, you have found yourself somewhere here. Like, you've moved a little bit to the east, so you get the sense you need to either move back west to pick up the trail again, or eventually north, and you'll find the edge of the lake and be on your way to Tamerlane. You're in sort of these rolling, like right in these rolling hills on the map here. Uh, who is leading the party and where? what way are you making it? I, I am not leading. Yeah, the party has voted Harkus not to lead. Who is leading? Yeah, Leonard can lead. Leonard, roll me a check. Real quick. Guidance. You have guidance. All right. That'll do it. Leonard, uh, you managed to expertly uh, guide the party. A storm does blow up. And uh, it is blinding driving snow that you're making your way through. But despite the blinding and driving snow, you uh, managed to expertly lead the party uh, back to the trail. And then it only takes you a surprisingly short amount of time to make it all the way to the town of Termalane. And I will take you to Termalane now. Uh, when I find the soundboard for Termalane. Come on, Termalane, where? Here we go, Termalane. And now I gotta find the actual look for Tamerlane. One moment. Please bear with me. I have too many maps. Targos. Tamerlane. Here we go. You guys arrive on the city streets of Tamerlane. Make your way into town, walking through the uh, dock borders. Uh, 
I'll show you the map of Tamerlane first here before we go straight to the city streets. You guys arrive through this entrance here to the south where the, uh, I'm going to make a mark, it says to Targos. You are heading from Targos to Tamerlane and make your way in here. Uh, the interesting thing about this place is, is that it is really quite beautiful. Um, the buildings are just gorgeous. Uh, they are covered in, like, really nice, uh, like, artwork that is, uh, really, really well done. There are sculptures on the buildings and carvings, uh, pictures of, uh, like, mermaids and, uh, seafare things and mythical creatures and... But the thing that, uh, gets you the most is the wind. Although it is picturesque and really quite pretty, at least the architecture and stuff, the wind is just howling. And uh, as you're sort of looking around, you see, you know, carvings of wizards and tigers and gin and homunculi and all kinds of things. Um, the one thing that stands out at your mind as you're walking down by these city streets is that you do not see any traveling merchants uh, near the... Uh, near sort of where a merchant troop would be set up at the docks. There are some people milling about town. There is a young boy that is standing on what looks like a uh, wooden crate in the center of the street. He's wrapped in heavy wooden clothing, and he appears to be sort of shouting the news of the day somewhat like a paper boy. Uh, as you approach him... As everybody sort of is approaching him towards the town, in the center of town. He looks over at all of you and says, Ah, the gemstone mine is closed. Closed because of monsters. Speaker Matthew is offering 50 gold to anyone who can clear it out. 50 gold to anyone who can clear out the gemstone mine. Closed because of monsters. Hear ye, hear ye. And, uh, he's just standing on his little crate, and he looks over at all of you as he says this. Uh, you're up front, uh, Toot, and Leonard, and Harkus. What do you do? After the after the miserable showing from getting everyone lost, Harkus is really just sort of keeping to himself. He's kind of tucked up under his his hide and trying to pretend like yesterday yeah, didn't happen. You're having to protect your face because it is the wind is just like blinding almost in town. And you know, uh, wants to know more. Yeah, what do you what do you ask is to this uh, said boy? Um, I'm going to walk up to him and say, okay, what are you selling? He says, I'm selling nothing, sir. Speaker, uh, Speaker Maskew, he uh, paid me five silver to uh, to recruit anybody that would be able to help. Gemstone mine has been evacuated. All the miners ran run off. So he wants us to mine? No, no, no. He says, uh, the miners got run off. Monsters. We're not, we're not miners, we're adventurers. The boy looks confused. He says, I don't, you can, you should just talk to him. Well, okay, where, where is he? He says, Speaker Master, you, you can find him at the, at the Blue Clam. Leonard looks around for a Blue Clam. Says, as you're looking around, he says, it's a tavern. As you've arrived in, uh, I suppose it's with your expert uh, tracking, it's still morning. He's in the tavern at this hour? Well, I mean, that's where he said he would be. He, he owns not, the tavern. No, he doesn't own the tavern, but there's not much else to do here these days. All right, do, do I see a tavern? 
Uh, he can point you in the direction of the blue clam. You do not yeah. see one. I'll show you the map here. The most conspicuous thing is the lack of merchant. Uh, the blue clam, you guys are, let me put out a Leonard here, where you are. Leonard, you are sort of right here, by Dockside. Okay, right? Sort of followed the main path into town here by Dockside, where you would suspect that merchants would be set up kind of in the merchant quarters, like right here. And he points that the blue clam, where the speaker of town would be, is right here. Okay. I'm going to ask him then, since we're sort of set up in the in where I would expect the traders to be, where, where is everybody? He says, well, not many traders come through these days. Mostly just, mostly just fishermen and miners around here, but when the gym mine shut down, well... Economy of uh, town is kind of poor. You're surprised he knows the word economy. Well, we killed the lake monster so they can fish again. Well, that's tremendous news. <laughs> he says, what's your name? Up. My name's Darmo. I'm Leonard. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Len Leonard. Sure. All right. Dharma Maslu. Dharma Maslu. We're going to go. Well, Leonard is very interested in finding out what's in this gem mine. Yeah. What's everybody else doing? Are you looking for room and board, waiting on, waiting on travelers, or going to seek the... Uh, advice the speaker of town who apparently has hired a boy to stand on a box and hail people to see him about the gem mine must be a pretty big deal hire a kid to advertise Leonard is it 50 to... each or 50 total he looks over and says I don't know <laughs> He didn't, he didn't pick the greatest salesman, I don't think. Ah. But... All right. Well, oh, at least we know who to go it's, to uh, see. 5000 each. That'll sell them. <laughs> okay. How much is a 50? <laughs> is that a lot? He doesn't know. Is that a lot? <laughs> Listen, I'm just a boy. Uh, yeah. So, are you guys heading over to the Blue Clam? I say let's go talk to the speaker. Okay. Make your way over to the Blue Clam. And uh, things are uh, fairly lively there. Uh, actually, are fairly slow there, I suppose. Um, a few people are milling about. I have this set up for a nighttime arrival so going to be deleting a few people from the clam uh, as you arrive uh, sitting on the steps of the blue clam uh, you encounter a uh, orcish man sitting next to another person in uh, it looks like uh, leather armor maybe or something like that uh, he's bundled, they're both bundled up though with some sort of uh, like heavy coats around them and uh, as you approach uh, as one sees you and uh, as the orcish man sort of sees you he uh, waves you over and looks over at you all in somewhat of a friendly manner and says uh, ah, you all seem entirely too prepared for trouble are you here about the mine? did uh, did Dormu send you? Yes. So he can get his finder's fee. His finder's yes. fee. Dormu did send us. Excellent. Excellent. Well, as it turns out, a group of nasty little kobolds. Are you familiar with them? 
He says, oh, pardon me, for I did not introduce myself. My name is Oros Mastu. I'm the speaker here of Tamerlane. I'm relatively new to the job, but uh, my uh, adoptive father entrusted me with uh, this duty, and I will fulfill it to the best of my ability. So you inherited the job. What happened to the last guy? Ah, he retired. He's still here. He's just old. Shailen? My adoptive father, Shailen Mastu. So, Drogo mentioned that you wanted us to mine some gems? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing about mining, good sir. Unless you, unless you so desire to, that could be certainly part of your finder's fee. There are valuables there. He says, uh, the wealth of Tamerlane came actually in, well, Tamerlanes. You've heard of the gemstone? It's a bright pink gemstone with great value. Local mine here was uh, a source of Tamerlanes. Uh, they have the ability to uh, be worth lots of money. <laughs> Stop. Some people say that they have the ability to hold ma to hold magical powers, but as far as I knew, have lots of money. <laughs> All right, is the, fair. Is their fair. greatest ability. But um, no, no, no. Uh, we don't need miners. As it turns out, ha are you familiar at all with kobolds? Nasty little draconic things. They, uh, a group of these kobolds crept into the mine a few days ago. Nope. They, they, in, they entered from the surface and forced all the miners to abandon their jobs. To a group of adventurers like you, kobolds should be no problem to handle, but they're too much for our miners. Uh, to top it all off, a uh, few days ago, before the kobolds showed up, uh, one of the uh, miners, a human man by the name of uh, Kerrigan, he, uh, he disappeared. Uh, you see, the mine has a tremendous large shaft in the center of it that plunges tens of thousands of feet down into the earth, all the way into the deep underworlds. I would highly advise you, if you're headed there, to help us with our cobalt problem, not to fall into that shaft. He probably fell into the shaft, but you must understand, the miners, they're a superstitious lot, and we have had incursions from the Underdark before, and they fear that some foul beastie must have crawled up from the Underdark that did him in. So, besides dealing with the cobalt threat, uh, to earn your keep, if you are able to fully explore the mine and remove any potentially foul threats that had crept in and provide for the security for our miners to return to their jobs. For this fee, I will pay from the town coffers a sum total of 50 gold apiece. Is this acceptable to you all, fair, fair adventurers? You know, I... I'm sold, but I just like exploring stuff. What say you, Master Orc Woman and Orc Man? I have a, feel a special kinship with you. Sounds good to me. Sounds fun. Ah, very good then. Would anyone care then to join me and my companion here for a drink in the club? <coughs> no? Down to work it is, then. I mean, don't, don't be too hasty. I mean, I think... I hit, I heard no response, so I assumed I am, that I you were thirsty. headed straight to work. I am thirsty and hungry. I'm going inside. Ah, indeed. Please, please join me. Some of us and, work uh, better with drink. And the two of them walk in and uh, secure a table for you all. It's ten in the morning. <laughs> It is uh, closer to noon. Close it's getting enough. closer to lunch. It took you some time to get there and everything. You know, 1030. It's close. Uh, as you enter the uh, enter the saloon, you notice that it is simply a bar and no, uh, no inn. Uh, I don't know if you're asking about places to stay while you're here in town, but uh, 
they don't seem to have a lot of food, just drink. Uh, Oris uh, turns to the barkeep and he says, uh, Vernon, get these, uh, get these men some drinks. Uh, put it on uh, the Tamerlane coffers. Uh, I would say three rounds would do. Uh, secure them, secure them three rounds. They're here to deal with our uh, gym mine problem. Everybody roll perception. Perception. Ten, seven, eleven, twenty-one. All right, uh, Harkus and Yatara. When he says they're here to deal with our gem mine problem, you see a couple of people in their bar, in the bar. They sort of look at him and kind of roll their eyes a little bit, and then turn back to their drinks. Mm. You didn't see what that. Was, what was that eye roll? Uh, you just saw a couple of people. Are you confronting them? No, no. I'm, them? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask him. I'm sorry, I didn't roll my eyes. They did. When you mentioned the gem mine problem, he looks over and says, "Oh, um, perhaps uh, have you not experienced this yourself, good sir? The some of the town folk do not take kindly to." one of our kind being in a position of authority. You see, my father was not half-orc. I was his adopted son. And although I was dutifully elected, there were those that opposed me. I tried, I must admit, I did not wish to admit this, but I tried before, uh, you all had aroused to arise a militia to deal with said problem. And let's just say there's some dissent in the ranks. But I think that if the problem is handled, most of the people in town will fall into line. I'm not a bad man or a bad leader, sir. But I cannot deal with the racism and downright bigotry of some. I have to live with it. How far away is this mine? About a 30 minute walk. Not very far. I can show you. At this point, I feel ready to go. All right. You guys have drinks and are you headed to the mine? I think I would like to take a rest at some point. Okay. We just took, we just took oh, one. Uh, you what did actually. You did actually manage to get a rest, albeit in the wilderness. Short rest or long? Long rest. It was long. Oh, sweet. You're long rested. I'd like to ask the speaker of the town about if they had any um, mysterious murders in the town recently. He uh, says mysterious murders. And what? What are you speaking of? The ice dagger murders. I've heard rumors of them. Yes, those type of mysterious murders. We haven't seen anything of that sort here, but um, I fear that it's only a matter of time before such a thing reaches our shores. But uh, no, I haven't seen anything of the sort. Have you... Uh, are you working on this as well? Good sir. I just kind of disregard his question and, and tell him we're ready to go to the mines. Well, very good. If uh, if you do hear word of uh, such an event, then uh, please, I would be wish to be the first to be notified. So, so, if you're all done and had your drinks, everybody may roll constitution saving throws to see how drunk you are while entering a mine. No, I'm kidding. Um, I was down. You no, don't no, get that all, roll. It's all good. I'm not. I'm not that mean of a DM. That'd be fun. Uh, you got, he takes you to the surface of the mine. Um, let's see here. Uh, the entrance to the gym mine is an open tunnel. Actually, let me bring you there really quickly. Let's see here. Gym mine level one. Or approaching the mine. Here we go. 
even better. The entrance to the gem mine is an open tunnel in a hillside. Empty carts are parked near the entrance. Next to the entrance, there is a sign uh, on a crude wooden post that has been propped up. Written on the sign in charcoal are the words kobolds only, written in common. And what strikes you as rather strange, uh, well, maybe it doesn't. Uh, roll insight, everybody. I assume somebody's going to get this with an insight roll. If you don't, then if everybody tanks it. Okay. Toot. Toot and Ordella, you guys get it. Uh, the words are written in elaborate calligraphy. It says kobolds only, but it's in like swirling and swooping letters. And like, a kobold shouldn't write this. This is like fancy writing. Uh, the uh, mayor of town, the speaker of town, uh, Oris, he uh, looks over at you all and says, well, this is the way. If you're able to deal with these nasty little uh, draconic buggers and find out if any other little beastie has crawled up from the depths, then uh, just let me know. And uh, if it's all good, then we'll check out and you get your gold and... Uh, if you manage to find any valuable gems while you're there that you can carry out, well, those are yours to keep as well. So, uh, good luck to you. I'll uh, be at the clam. Doing my thing. And, uh... I will take you into the mine. From the outside, it appears dark inside, right? Yes, it's dark inside. How big is the sign? Uh, like poster sized. Okay. Never mind. What were you thinking? It's like, imagine like sign sized. Like I don't know. Well, I wasn't sure if we we're talking like just a like, small little stake with like yeah. It's like a foot. It would be like a foot by a half a foot by a foot or something like that. Okay, can I pull it up and I'm going to cast light on it because I can't see well in the dark. Yeah, you sure can. And I'm just going to tote it with me as a... You sure can. Yep. Uh, as you enter the mine, uh, there are rough-hewn steps that descend are descending about 60 feet down. Downwards. Who's leading? What's the order of the party here? Oh, Leonard is not in the front of this party. All right, Harkus, you're leading. Who else? I'll be behind him. Harkus, then Ordella, then who? I'll be in the middle. Toot, where are you, Leonard? You're in the back. I'll be behind Toot. And Granite Guts, where and, are you? And I guess I could take up the take up the back. Okay. As you descend down these steps, the first area you encounter, there are racks holding picks and hammers that are nailed to the walls of a small cavern. The floor is covered with rock dust, and there appear to be tracks in the dust. Are you guys all able to see the map? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what you see. Picks and things and rock dust in the, the floor there. And tracks. Do the tracks look? Do they look fresh, or do they look? Roll like me survival, Yatara. If you're investigating the tracks, roll me survival. Can I provide guidance? You sure can. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Eighteen. Uh, they are reptilian footprints mingled with human tracks, uh, as well as a set of tracks that look like they belong to some sort of like large rodent-like creatures. Uh, the reptilian tracks, they fan out, going in sort of like this direction and this direction and this direction. The uh, rodent tracks, or what look like large rodent tracks, they, uh, they head up this way. And uh, human tracks also sort of fan out everywhere. They look hard to tell their recency. Uh, rel relatively recent. They're not old, old, or anything like that. 
So Harkus, you're leading the front of the party. Where direction are you you're leading everybody and where are you going? Um you can move your character pawn on the screen. Everybody needs to have roll twenty up and uh you know, be looking at the map to know where they're moving their tokens. So I think I'm gonna move sort of cautiously down toward the bottom here. Okay. Um, sort of. There are two paths leading southward that sort of diverge there. Uh, they both sort of wind off into the uh, distance. You can see one to your immediate right and one to your immediate left. I think... Now remember, you've been hired to clear out this mine, so you're going to have to kind of yeah. explore over it. Do I, so just kind of standing here at the, at the middle here, um, yeah. do I, do I pick up anything, any sounds or smells or sort of any, anything sort of. Uh, roll me perception. Of interest. Of Here's interest. what I want everybody to do, by the way, while you're here. I want everybody to select their token. First, select your tokens. And everybody just roll initiative, and we're gonna keep the <laughs> we're gonna keep the same initiative for like who's doing what when throughout this this dungeon crawl. Okay. If you're really terrible, and if we don't if you don't finish this dungeon crawl tonight, then you'll you'll re-roll tomorrow next session. Okay. Um, yeah, so roll me perception, uh, Harkus. I, I did. It was an eight. It wasn't very good. So, uh, um, you don't really detect much. You do hear, think, I'll give you this. You hear the sound of water okay. echoing, uh, that sort of sounds like it's, you just hear water somewhere in the distance. That's all you get. Okay. So I think given that, what I'm going to sort of suggest to the group is that we just sort of navigate from from sort of right to left and and sort of go down this pathway and then we can sort of come back to here and and sort of work our way okay are you splitting up the party or are you all going no no i just meant well i mean unless anybody wants to go and do something else but my intention was to for us to sort of just explore as Okay. So, Harkis, you're suggesting so, that you go in which direction? That everybody move in? Which well, direction? I was saying, sort of systematically, we just sort of work our way here, and then here, and then we can come back and work up here. Okay. So, heading down this pathway to the left, is everybody okay with that and moving that way? Mm hmm. All right. I'll let you guys move your character tokens in the order you wish to be in. Harkis, you can slowly advance forward. Since we're not okay. in initiative, you can just sort of move your token. As you're working your way down this pathway, the pathway winds forward. Until you eventually come upon what looks like a ledge. It looks like it's about uh, 10 feet up, uh, rising to a platform just above your head. You think that with... Uh, not too much effort. You could probably pull yourself up on the top of the ledge. Okay. Um, like, you don't have to roll. You could just do this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull myself up. Okay. As you pull up onto the uh, top of the ledge, you find uh, a room with a bunch of benches and tables set up in it as workspaces where miners clean the gemstones that they find. There are gravel and pebbles strewn about the ground, scattered across the floor, a few hammers, picks, and broken lanterns. You do now, in the distance from where you're at here, start to hear the sounds of uh, what sounds like rushing water in the distance. Um... I think I'm so in general I'm feeling a little uneasy about this place so I'm going to be sort of looking around for like 
I guess, traps of some kind, make sure that there's not sort of yeah. discrepancies in the appearance of the wall, make sure that I don't see sort of light coming out from under anything. Or You don't see anything like that. Um, are, is it, are you searching for things? You're looking for traps. Uh, you don't see anything sort of that stands out, obviously out of place. If you're just sort of looking around, you can roll me perception. Okay. I'm just sort of as the as the as the sort of lead. I'm just trying to make sure that there's not yeah sure danger more than anything else, and then everybody else can sort out if there are things worth grabbing as we walk through. Yeah, you don't with a seven. You don't detect any danger. Okay. If anybody's so, searching for things right. to grab, you can look around. If anybody is doing that. There are various things strewn about on the ground here. What do you want us to okay. roll? Oh, if you're rolling for that, roll me perception. See what you see. Okay. Yeah, we are definitely looking around. Okay. Uh, Ordella, uh, you find uh, a small figurine of a dog that's been carved out of uh, rock. It has two small pebble-sized pink tourmalines for eyes. Oh. And uh, it's kind of cute. Uh, Leonard, you find uh, a fairly nice-looking uh, tourmaline gem that was sitting on the uh, sitting on a table. All right. Your little dog is probably worth about ten GP, and your tourmaline gem is probably worth about uh, twenty GP. Uh, as Harkas, you start moving down the next tunnel, you hear the sounds of uh, rushing uh, water more uh, more intensely. Okay. I was going to turn around and say water and sort of start walking in this direction. As you round the corner, you see a wooden... Uh, wooden like uh, walkway that is attached to the sides of the uh, of the shaft and there is a tremendous tremendously deep shaft that is plunging down into depths that you can't even begin to see how deep there is what looks like an underground river that is pouring over the side of the shaft down into the depths into the darkness and it is loud in here to the point where as you enter the shaft it's echoing off the sides and you sort of need to like shout at each other to uh shout at each other to be heard Jeff Leonard is going to navigate through this chamber hugging the wall well what I was what I was wondering about is are there sort of in the wall here mm -hmm. um is there is there any kind of I don't know I just feel like this is probably not the the safest of things to walk across uh -huh. um, and so what I'm wondering is if there are hooks or latches or or Hand something holds. that we could sort of tie off on or doesn't seem doesn't wall. seem to be um, do we have anything are you inspect are you inspecting the safety of the walkway yes. How are you doing that? Um, I'm going to call my artificer and have him sort of give it a good one. Artificer, over. how are you examining the safety of the walk? But what are you doing? I'm going to bend down and look at it. As you bend down and look at it, roll me, roll me perception, please. Can I give him guidance? You sure can. Roll a d4. 11. 11. Uh, you step on it a little bit with your foot, push on it with your hands. It seems quite what was, sturdy. What was that, but, 14? Oh, I'm sorry. There were uh, two rolls there. No, no, no. The 14 was to find the gem. Yeah, 14 was for, found the terminal. Way more important. See, that's that's where you, you wasted it. Uh, it appears steady and sturdy as you push on it with your hand and your leg. As you lean down to push on it, you do detect sort of an odd vibration on it. 
it's like a I'm going to think of how to describe it it's like a vibration I'll I'll let everybody know and clearly convey that I have no idea what that means and it seems Uh, it sort of is a vibration that's almost like a roll me insight it's like a Like it's not a coming apart vibration. No. Insight 20. It's like a back forth vibration. As you sort of are like leaning down and touching it, pushing on it. And I'm basing this off of an 11 here. Like you push on it, it's sturdy. You step on it, it's sturdy. You look at the way it's constructed, looks reasonably sturdy to your artificer. But you do feel as you're pushing on it sort of a it's loud in here, but you feel this like it's got a little bit of motion to it. It's not moving. You just feel a vibration through it. It seems to be emanating maybe from like underneath it. Huh? All right. So I have 50 feet of rope. So what I think I'll do is just. Yeah. This vibration seems to be coming from like under, seems to be coming from like underneath the walkway. Or something. I'm going to tie it around my waist and give the other end to Ordella and I guess Toot is the second nearest. And I'm going to start walking across and see if I can get across and find something else to sort of tie it off on so that we have a way mm-hmm. to get people across. Yeah. Uh, you walk across. Go ahead and move your token across. Up against the wall. Hugging the walls. Yeah. Doesn't fall. Nice and safe. You reach another okay. tunnel that seems to be heading that way. The walls are rough hewn rock and you don't see anything to attach it to. The area that it is attached to seems to be underneath it. So if you were gonna tie off like imagine like it's like like this up against the wall. Yeah. You know, like a triangle. So if you were gonna tie a rope, you'd have to like lean underneath it and tie it to one of the supports that's underneath it. Does okay. that make sense? So so then what I'll do is I'll just hold on to the rope. And then I guess if Ordella wants to hold on, then I guess. So the only thing you can think of to tie it to would be like the the underneath supports. So are you doing that? It seems like it seems like the two half orcs can probably hold on to the rope while other people walk across in order to ensure that it doesn't collapse on them. And if it does, then they've got a hold of a rope. Yeah, I'd really like to get a look at the underside of this bridge, but. Are you gonna like lay down and peer your head underneath it? No. Uh, Leonard is about as afraid of heights as I am, so no. Are um, you telling you someone? Are you telling someone or... less afraid of heights to do oh, this? Oh yeah, I, I will express my musings to the group. Is there a ladder along the edge or anything? Nope. Yeah, if you express that, Toot will voluntarily do it. Um, Toot. As I think Toot will like lay down and like use the <laughs> sign, like leaning okay. over. All right, to, like, Toot, put your, put your token, side. put your token where you're at. Sure. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna go right here, and yeah, I will do it. Uh, Toot, as you lean over and look underneath, you see two winged dragon-like creatures <laughs> that look like kobolds, each of them holding hand saws that appear to be going. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the underside of the supports of the bridge, and they're okay. sitting there just like do 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 do. Are they close enough that I can whack them with the sign? They haven't noticed you at all. Oh, they are right here, and they are right here, and they are just happily like sawing away at the supports. Okay. Uh, yeah, I need to do something about that. To, um, they haven't noticed you. You peer your head underneath, and do it is so loud in here with the falling waterfall that uh, that uh, they haven't heard you or noted made any note of you as they continue to like work away with their little hand saws. Um, fuck it, I cast sleep. Oh shit! Uh, roll, roll your dice. Nice. <laughs> uh, sorry. Q. 
can't wait. <laughs> oh wait, that didn't Bye -bye. do what I thought I was gonna do. Uh... Oh fuck. <laughs> uh, how do you do this? You lean over the edge. Very nice. Cast... <laughs> the two kobolds all of a sudden look over at you as you're casting this spell. And all of a sudden their eyes blaze over and the two of them just go <laughs> and tumble. And they go, you just hear like a Looney Tune sound. Yeah, so with one hand I'm holding the sign and waving it, and with the other I'm waving. And they disappear. <laughs> they fall so far. It is just they are out of sight and gone. You never <clears throat> catch their names. Like, you assume, Toot, they, were, they had wings so they could fly, but they were asleep and not flying. And if they fall all this way without catching themselves and falling, maybe they would fall so far that it's over a minute before they wake up, and they wake up mid-fall. Uh, you don't know, but you are a hundred percent certain that if they hit something before they wake <clears throat> up, they are way dead. I uh, stand back up and say, "All clear." <laughs> do you tell them that there were kobolds? Do you tell them there were kobolds underneath there, or do you just lean your head under cast sleep and pop back up and go, "All clear"? Actually, I think I will hold the sign, and it's still lit up with light, and I'll point at it and go. <laughs> where the kobolds only says yeah <laughs> kobolds all clear uh yeah all clear totally worth a spell slot i'm sure i mean that's the most awesome way i could have possibly imagined taking care of this problem <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing other than two miniature explosions pop, pop. <laughs> yeah uh harkas as you round the corner you see what appears to be a bucket lift and a crank on the wall. There's also what looks like a crank in the bucket. It looks large enough for one medium-sized creature. Uh, this is further down, down that pathway that you were heading down the other way. My, my thing was, yeah, it was messed up. Yeah, know. you see a bucket okay. lift that is heading downwards. It's big enough for one medium-sized creature. There appears to be a crank on the wall to haul it back up to this level and a crank in the bucket to lower someone down to a lower level of the mine. Is it is it moving right now? Nope, it's stationary, sitting at the top. Okay. You climb in it and start cranking yourself oh, okay. down. Are you going down or are you going back to explore the other pathways that you bypassed? Mm. I kind of feel like I'm just going to get in this and start cranking it downward. How many people can it hold? One at a time. One at a time. Okay, Harkus. You. Uh, I'm gonna sort of hold my. I'm gonna hold my quarter staff in one hand and. Takes uh, thirty seconds or so. You see Harkus disappear into the darkness, and uh, he uh, is gone to everyone else's view except to John Hawkins's who as all views, and Harkas, you land on another level of the mine, the bucket, you are able to step out of it, and uh, the mechanism creaks as the uh, lift bucket descends to the floor of a small cave, where two dusty tunnels lead in opposite directions uh, from you. Uh, the, the rest of you are able, at the top, are able to crank the bucket back up if you're all going to lower yourselves in, down. Harkas has lowered himself down. You don't see anything down either pathway. It's dark. I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to try and listen and see if I can discern anything while they're loading up the... Well, the next person is sort of... Yeah, um, uh, you don't hear anything it, except yeah. the waterfall above. Okay. And everything else is fairly quiet. All right, so I'm just going to kind of hang out here, kind of tuck backward <clears throat> back in this little nook, waiting for the remainder of the party. Yeah. Is uh, is everybody lowering down? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. If everybody is lowering down, then I will just move everyone. The rest of you lowering down? Yes. I think so. Yep. Let me just grab everyone and I'll drag you over there. Well, 
on roll 20 and let me grab them. Oh, darn. Now it's not letting me zoom out. Hang on. Roll 20. I gotta be such a bitch, roll 20. That's why I get demonetized for kids. <laughs> okay, you all land over here. Over here. Come on, move. There. Two dusty tunnels extend out in opposite directions. One to the north, one to the south as you enter the second level. Let me change the... Uh, You do hear some screeching sounds around periodically. All right, now that everybody's here, I'm going to just start making my way down. Which way are you going? Um, I'm going to go down and... I guess I'm going to go over here to the, to the right. As you round that corner, Harkus, you see a table and chairs are set up to create what looks like a space for miners to take breaks and mine and dine. And on top of the table, there are two kobolds that are poking a giant rat with their javelins to make sure it's dead. They all they screech loudly as uh, they see you and they rush to attack. You're in initiative order. Toot, you sort of hear this and see this, too. What are you doing, Toot? You're first in initiative. I'm going to roll their initiatives real quick. Have I lost everyone? Nope, we're here. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, all right, I don't know anything about these creatures so i'm just going to uh, you just murdered two of them so you slept two of them with less than 25 so yeah that's that's true um i'm just gonna shoot a crossbow at it uh, okay so... uh 13 is a miss okay uh i will duck back into the corner That's all I do. Okay. Ordella, you're up. Okay, let's see. I'm going to shoot at the closer one with my crossbow. Shooting at the closer closer one with the crossbow. That's a hit. Does nine piercing damage. And that sucker falls over dead. Nice. Uh, the remaining alive kobold lets out an absolute screech and it takes its turn to dash and try to run off. Uh, it's got 60 feet of dash. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He dashes that way. Uh, Harkus, you would be up next. Are you giving chase or uh, or what? You just watched uh, Ordella just slay one instantly with a crossbow shot. Yeah, so I'm going to run up here and then um, chuck my spear at him. Okay. Make an attack roll. Oh. That's a miss. Cadillac like Granite Guts, what are you doing? You're way back there. I am way back there. Um, I am, I guess, going to take the dash action. Um, Say, which should get me to about here. Okay. 
and um, I don't think Yatara. I have any applicable magic to do here, so that's where I'll Yatara. stay. Yatara, Yatara, you're up. I'm gonna move up first. Hold on. I really can't see around the corner yet. Okay. Yeah, still can't see him. Probably a little far for you to cast anything from there. Can't really see much. Um, what is the dash? Is it double your... Double your movement. Double your movement? Okay, yeah, I guess I'll dash that far. Yeah, as an action, double your movement. All right, Leonard. You sort of hadn't even moved in any direction as you landed off the bucket. You're still there oh, by no. the bucket. I'm following everybody. Following everybody? All right. Everybody's just kind of dash in that direction. Two, what about you? I'll move forward, and then I guess I'm just going to dash because I can't see anything. See anything. Okay. Right. I'll go to, like, here. Okay. Ordella, you're up. Ordella, I think in the distance you can make out the fleeing kobold. Are you sighting him up with your crossbow to shoot him in the back? Yes. Let him. Uh, okay. Ah. That's a mess. Uh, Grek is dead. Poor Grek. Say goodnight, Grek. <laughs> Small, however, is going to take the dash action again as a crossbow bolt goes flying by him. And he runs around the corner which seems to head to uh, seems to be spiraling downwards yeah all right that's what that's what he did small ran around the corner Arcus mm. Everyone knows Whoa. it's always a great idea to chase kobolds. Decisions, decisions. What could go wrong? I feel like the best plan is to split the party. <laughs> yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chase him. Okay, 15, All right. Um, let's see. Forty. Can I see him? Nope. Uh, let me see if I right. can see him. Not from here. I can't. I don't. I don't see him anywhere. No, you would not be able to see him yet. No. You don't have line of sight to him. No. Nope. Uh, is everybody just dashing? Is that what everybody's going to do this turn? Or is anybody uh -oh. saying? I didn't dash. I just oh, you just moved my right? normal movement. Yeah, I did my normal movement, thinking if I saw him, I could do something. But are you um, going to dash then? Well, I guess I can take the rest of it since I'm. I'll just go to like right here. Okay, Jeff, uh, you... I'm going to um, before I, I I'm going to um, use my movement to get to here and then summon my flamethrower. Okay. How badly do we want to catch this guy? That's a good question. We have to clear it. Are we afraid well, of it alerting other things? He could yes. get help and bring it back to us, and then we wouldn't know about it. At least this way, we're walking directly into it with a flamethrower. Uh, it's not my turn. I'm going to shut up. That is one way to handle it. Like... It's probably a trap. We should run into it. I mean, wait for the ambush or trigger the ambush. It's yeah. 
Uh, granite guts. What are you doing? Um, I am going to advance to right here, but no further. That does not put me into dash. Okay. And I'm going to ready, uh, ready an attack. Okay. Yatara, you're up. I'm just going to move to kind of the other little corner where Toot is. All right. You sort of move up there. Are you uh, acting on anything? You're sort of slowly moving, not dashing towards him? No, I think I'm in the same boat as Toot. If, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang in the back for a little bit. Yeah. I'm not going to be sure. in the front of the action. I'm not sure if this is a great idea or nay. Leonard, you've already moved and opened up your flamethrower, right? Uh huh. So, Toot, you're up now. All right. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, do I hear anything as far as what direction? Uh, you do hear, I see? I guess I see Harkus. So, you see Harkus up there. Harkus is running at full tilt just towards him. You hear, uh, <laughs> Little like okay. dragon, little like dragon screams as it's running down the hall. Okay, so I've moved my thirty. It's bonus action, misty step. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. I can see to. Yeah, shit. That's not where he went. No, no. Where, where are you going? I'll move you depending on where you're going. Just well, I mean, I was going to go in this direction, but. Uh, which, which? Yeah. It's another. That's the direction. It's just another okay. level. Got it. All right. Okay. As you as you get to there, Toot, this is what you're able to see. So you're would right. I have been able to see farther because Misty Step allows me to go sixty, I think. Yeah. Or am I think no, it goes thirty. So that was farther than I should have been able to go. You're able to get to right here. Uh, and you right can where see him the sort screen of... went black, so okay. Uh, Toot, you're down here. Okay, and I can see him in front of me. Yep. He's, you misty step and appear and he's running and he sort of looks back over his shoulder and just goes ah! okay uh, so that was only my movement and my bonus action action I will attempt to crossbow him oh okay cause yeah I don't think anything else is gonna deal with it Okay. Uh, that's a miss. Okay. That's or, London. Or Della, you're up. Okay, let me. Hear which direction? I can see him. Where did he go? Uh, you can't see him yet from uh. where you're at. Okay. Well, get Toot had a bonus action that allowed him to misty step. Okay. If you dash, you could see him. I'm afraid to dash. I bet there's a whole bunch of them waiting on us. Gonna well, here's here. what you saw. Everybody's running. You saw Toot running, and then you saw Toot disappear, and then, like, reappear way up in the distance in the dark. And you heard a crossbow fire. <laughs> All right, cool. And a little beastie scream. Ah! I'll go up there with him then. So you're dashing? Yeah. All right. I'll move you basically to where two is. Okay. So that's about what you can get to with dash, which is down here. So you're down here now. Okay. Uh, it is his turn. And. He's going to dash again. He dashes around the corner. All the while, uh, he is letting out like... Harkus, you're up. All right, well... Um... I 
I've seen them run up, so I think I'm going to run up now. Okay, you're able to just move there with your movement now. Your movement will take you to about here. I don't know where I went. Okay. Uh, you're down here on another level, okay. on third okay. level deep. Okay. As you round the corner, Harkus, you see again that tremendous uh, waterfall that you've seen before. Uh, you're now below it, a level below. And uh, it is uh, the same, uh, just huge, uh, deep waterfall. Mm. Um. Well, there is a wooden plank that sort of another one of these uh like planks to stand on that seems to be wrapping around the infinitely deep cavern you see wooden boards that you assume the critter ran across all right i'm gonna take some extra movement and just get to right here so i can see sort of what's yeah, going on you see on the water the... falling down from the cavern above and you see what you see in this cavern now i'll just describe it to you here uh, you see a uh, tunnel shaft uh, slopes. Uh, the downward slope ends where it opens into the center shaft. A wooden walkway extends from this tunnel and then runs westward to another tunnel in the rock. In front of you, there is a large bucket like the one you came down earlier that dangles from a taut rope that stretches southward across the shaft and is connected to another wooden platform 15 feet away. So there's like a bucket here and a rope to pull yourself across. And then like a pulley system to send the bucket back. So that you can like bucket yourself across the never ending chasm. And then there is a plat then there is a platform that heads off to the west. And he ran um, this way. I feel like at this point I'm gonna turn around to the members of my group who have made it up here thus far and just go. 50 gold's not enough. I'm gonna take you out of initiative here. You read my mind. <laughs> so you're out of you're out of initiative mind. here. Uh, everybody is able to move up if you're all if you all were giving chase and doing so. I'm just gonna move you up there. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of us. Yeah. Hang on. I'll I'll get you up here. I mean, I'm running like Paul Blart Malkoff, but I'm still headed that way. Yeah, you're 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 a slow bit, but you you get there eventually. Uh, you round this corner and see the infinite deep shaft again, and the platform and the wooden bucket to ferry oneself across. Uh, you do hear uh, screeching kobold sounds in the distance. I don't. I must not know what a kobold is. Do they have wings? Can they fly? Some of them do. Some of them That's don't. That's terrifying. Did the one that we were chasing have wings? No. He did not. The two that you saw underneath the bridge had wings. <laughs> that didn't help them. Nope. Because they, uh, they fell down. All right, we're. I'm just gonna start you sort of in, keep you in initiative order to ask what you're doing. Granite guts, you arrive at this platform. What are you doing, Granite guts? Um, I think that I am going to. Uh, I guess step onto the platform. Okay. And can I tell which direction the uh, cobalt voices are coming from? Yeah, roll me perception. It's hard because it's so loud with the falling water in here. Yeah. With a 19, you hear them coming from the west. Okay. Over this way. Um. 
So I see what looks to be a couple of different. Yeah, you see, you can make out just in the dark some cobaltish figures. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say um, a couple of different paths across the way. Are you making your way over there? Um. So let's see. Um. Who's closest to me? I guess uh, Marcus and Ordella. Marcus and Ordella. So I turn around to y'all and I say, oh, "We got a couple of customers around the corner here. Do we want to? Do we? Do we want to go ahead? And, do we want to get them?" Doot, doot, doot. Leonard um, with drone in tow will come at him. As All right, you come well, at him, Leonard. As you come at him, Leonard. As you make your way over there, a different looking kobold with what looks like fake wings attached to his back <laughs> steps forward and uh, he says, he speaks to you in uh, common and he says, uh, hang on. Stop! We mean you no harm. Please don't hurt us. Please. Um, Leonard is going to slowly approach to get off this platform. He backs up and lets you. You see three other little co little cobalts huddling behind him, and he looks over at you and says, "My good sir, this everlasting winter has made the wilderness unsafe for my kind, and the prenatural cold dulls our wits. Please." We only wish for a place to stay so that we can keep out of this horrible weather. We can work. We won't cause trouble. Tamerlane would be richer for having us. Uh, I'm going to have to call in the, the cavalry on this one. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm going to hold up a, a hand and say, all right, one minute and step back and, and let the group know. Uh, Guys, I, I think they want to work the mine. I, I don't really know what's going on. This one talks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hear the other ones in the background screeching, and they go, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Drax. Drax, no. Drax, smart. It, is Drax a kobold? Trex. I'm sorry, Trex. He says, Trex, smart. Listen, Trax. Is, is and the other, the, wing, the kobold with the fake wings on him says, uh, I beseech you, good sir. All right. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, this dude is the one who wrote the fancy sign, which Toot is carrying around. Uh, he, oh. to all appearances, appears to be kobold. Okay, he is a kobold, but the wings are clearly. He looks fake. like he looks like a kobold to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call everybody over because I I don't really. Leonard is not well versed in the nuances of monsters who want to do work. Yep. So I, uh, I don't really know. So, you, who, so Leonard says, hey, shouts, hey, everybody. Yeah, because I don't know that, because Toot knows that there were kobolds trying to cut the bridge, but I don't know that, right? You don't. I, you saw me pointing at the sign, and you saw me cast a spell. Right, but I didn't you see. you saw no more issues. Right. But you didn't see that. Right. And I so, didn't say it. I have no reason to, to think that that they've done anything other than you know, we killed one but yeah but you're telling us this right yes absolutely out loud yeah toot will like do a sawing motion with his hands and he'll say they were cutting the bridge out from under us protecting uh, I, are you are you are you over there now I, i'll play the game of telephone and say he says you were cutting the bridge we only mean to protect ourselves it's I'm, in our nature to, to lay traps. He said they only I'm, mean to protect themselves, and it's in their nature to lay traps. 
Is anybody else coming I'm gonna, over? Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna come over. I'll come over. I'm gonna come over. Ordella, Yatara. He's got the clicker to collapse the bridge yes. in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the bridge blows. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm going and to. Everybody steps to out under the wooden plank, and he says, "Like I said, in our nature to lay traps." Click, and the bridge falls. TBK, <laughs> game over. Hope you had fun. Um, I'm Our going to explain game. to him what the what the guy in town told us that that we were sent here to sort of clear out the mine and reclaim the mine. And he says, "This winter, it is terrible even for our species. The uh, we only wish for for shelter and safety like any other." Uh, roll insight. All of us? Uh, whoever's talking to him. Toot, I think you would roll insight. Uh, I think Harkus, you would roll insight, and Leonard, you would roll insight. Okay. Can I guide myself? Yes, you can. And in fact, Toot, you can take advantage if you want, because you saw the sawing. Okay. Uh, Toot, with a 20... With a twenty toot, uh, he's full of shit. What was the last thing he said? There is dishonesty in his voice. Oh. Kelly's lied. Oh. Yeah. Um... Uh, Toot, um, with a 20 insight, there's also something distinctly uncobold like about him in the way that he speaks. Is anybody here familiar with kobolds? Was any, any of the characters be kobold familiar? Mm-mm. Yeah, he's very different than the others. Um... I will hold up the sign and I'm going to like look at the sign and then look at him and then I'm going to say liar and I'm going to throw the sign into the pit. He says we've we've yes we secured the mine as a place to live but perhaps something could be worked out where we 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 don't have to be killing each other in such a way. I, I tell you what, take us back to town, and we'll talk with this, this, this. I will, I will converse with this speaker, this leader of your of your town, and uh, I have a way with words for a kobold, and I could convince them that, or explain to him our actions. I know it seems wrong, but we we really just mean to survive, and if we could do so without harming the citizens of this town or the miners, then that would be in our interest as well. Take me to your leader. Um. Does he have wings? Uh, he he does have wings. They look sort of fakeish. Are these the fake-ish wings? Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I think having heard toot you a liar, I'm sort of. Um, ready to open fire on them? Yeah, I I think what I'm kind of inclined to do is 
I have the I have my sort of breath of the dragon. Uh huh. Just sort of open my mouth and kind of spark off a little bit. Just to sort of let him know that we're not messing around. Okay, so you're trying to roll intimidation? Yeah, basically. Okay. That goes well every time that I do it. <laughs> it's bound to go well one time. One I time. Days. Work. Maybe you're just too fuzzy looking. Come on. I give him guidance. Okay, that worked. Uh, he, as you do this, he clearly looks intimidated, and you can see the fight or flight response activate in him. And he turns and looks at you and says, If this be our last stand, then so be it! Attack! And uh, he charges at you to attack. Can I just blow it out at him since I yeah, already had uh, it? Yeah, yeah, you have it ready. Go ahead. Um, so it is... So this is actually a... 20 foot cone. Uh huh. That will get all four of them standing there. Okay. Um, they make and, saving throws? Yeah, it's a dex uh, 12. Oh, Lord. All four of them fail it miserably. Uh, all of these appear to be small and sort of withery looking kobolds. And. Three of them, in fact, they all drop just dead, dead in front of you. Harkus, as you're standing there, you unleash, is it fire you're breathing out? Yes, yes. In the midst of the fire, there is uh, sort of like, you're the only one that sees this, I think, Harkus. Uh, blue like etherealness starts to like wrap itself around from the obliterated burned out kobolds particularly the fancy speaking one and it starts wrapping closer and closer and closer around you and I need you to roll me a charisma saving throw please Oh, that's that's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Jesus! That's the way nice. to do it. That is the way to do it, Marcus. <laughs> a ethereal like spirit passes through your body, appears in front of you, and seems to try to merge with uh, with the spirit that is Harkus to like take over control of your body. And with a critical success charisma saving throw, uh, you manage to like fend off the uh, fend off the uh, wisps of this thing, and uh, it uh, it as quickly as like you uh, try to uh, fend it off, it uh, vanishes there in front of you, it disappears. And remaining on the ground is uh, the kobolds, uh, like, mostly charred and burnt up stuff. You unleashed all this fire, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the remaining stuff that the kobolds had on them is uh, slowly kind of burning off to the side. Um, you could feel this happen to you, but I don't think anybody else saw it. Can I just sort of pat them off really quickly with see if just yeah. kick them around a little bit, see if I see anything shiny in there? Nothing shiny. Uh, what anything you do useful? see is there's like a little pouch that's okay. filled with like mosses and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, like grassy material and some like random strange like nature things. Okay. Let me grab that. I'm going to yeah. kind of, I'd like to sort of pay attention to the one that was in front because he seems a little suspect and um, the one that was what the one in the, the front the one that was sort yeah the one that was yeah he was the one that the had talker. the strange the one that had sort of the strange okay. like pouch okay. um okay. 
That was that guy. Can I get Ender, a, you, can I can I tell what he was? Was he really a kobold? Was he? Uh, he appeared to be he, a kobold. Uh, roll me roll me arcana or religion. Uh, you think you saw a ghost. And whatever the ghost was, was not the ghost of a kobold, but it appeared to be possessing a kobold. Okay. Um, and you... I don't know. You're not a cleric or a paladin. Maybe you have friends that know more about ghosts and things than you do. All right. So... I have a paladin, but... Yeah, so I guess what I would do is sort of turn around and show them the pouch and tell them about this. All right, Granite Guts, just tried roll to... me, roll me like religion, I think. Okay. Um, and I also am going to move to uh, kneel next to the the charred corpse. Uh, two. You want to guide him? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I will guide them. You're like one point away from it, so I figured guidance. You spam it regularly, <laughs> you might as well spam it now. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your d4. Oh, with one, there's no way it can't. Yeah, you just said, I I just need you to be the ten, so yeah. you're, you're you're fine. I guess he's no point. Yeah. Um. You've heard of ghosts like this before, and they are tied to the mortal world by some like object that is like theirs, and you get a really negative feeling about the like pouch that uh, that he's holding. that Harkus is holding. Um, like, with a 10, you're like, destroy it or throw it down into the pit. Yeah, so, um, I ask him, can I, uh, can I, can I examine that pouch? Well, you sort of turned to your friend that knows more about it. What do you do, Harkus? I just hand it to him. Okay, he hands it to you. Do you want me to describe what's in um, it? Uh, there's no point. Um, I take it and I march to uh, the side and I fling it uh, off uh, into the void. And then I swirl around and I uh, say in a real terse voice, that pouch was altogether evil. Yeah. And as you, um, do, so, as you do so, you hear a, uh, you hear a, like, uh, moaning uh moaning voice sort of that uh disappears on the uh on the wind and uh kind of sounds like deep down in the uh deep cave and you see sort of a ghostly visage of a face that appears and then disappears down into the deep deep spaces and is gone. Um, I walk. The cobalt bodies are now sort of burning. I walk back over to the charred corpse of the um, of the leader, the one that was speaking common, and um, I put my hand on uh, the obliterated husk that used to be his face, and I uh, say, uh, "You can sleep well into the natural world. Uh, you're." You are no longer, um, you are no longer corrupted. Yeah, no longer possessed. His position is broken. And uh, I turn around to the rest of the group and I say, uh, "This, this, 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 this bothers me greatly. Uh, th that the natural, the natural order uh, is being upended by these." Um, I don't know what to call it, but uh, it's clear that um, that there's there's a great deal of corruption going on here, and things being yep. 
uprooted from their own will, and that's that cannot stand. Yatara. Make me a perception check, Yatara. Yatara, you hear a sound? And it's a strange sound that you haven't heard before. It's like a beep, beep, beep. And then like, almost like some faint like words, staticky, and then like it repeats. And there's like a beep, beep, beep. And then it sort of like repeats. And uh, you don't really like, you think you hear it. But yeah, it's just sort of, it's out of place to you. Can I hear it? Does it come in a direction or just do I just yeah. hear it in general? It seems to be coming from across the rope and bridge. I'm going to ask the group, does anybody else hear that sound, the beep? I can tell you this right now. No amount of rolling. They absolutely do not hear it. You okay, Yatara? Can, um, I, see, can I see anything uh, across the bridge at no, all? Can I make out it's, anything? This it's dark, but you can hear like almost some like it's almost like a staticky, and, and then it's gone. It's like you pick it up, and then it's gone. It rem, Yatara, it reminds you of that dream vision that you had almost. So I'm gonna pipe in here. Uh, with sort of what I have observed when those couple things have happened to Yatara. Because like the other night when you told me about the thing, I didn't see anything and I was watching. Uh, yeah, and then... you didn't see anything. Let me ask you this, out of character, just out of character. Does any character have any psychic or psionic abilities that I wouldn't otherwise know about? Other than your wizard Yatara that I'm giving some uh -huh. essentially like some psychic connection you're, you're 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 sort of psychically attuned is what's happening here i have a history of visions through dreams okay yeah so you've had visions and dreams so you may have some psionicism too so you're not picking up anything just yet granted guts but okay i would need to know that actually at this point am i gonna i'm going to actually tell the group what happened the previous night since I feel like I'm I'm on the verge of losing my mind at this point. Yep. It only seems to be happening in the woods. Um, I don't know if the rest of the group knows anything about like what Yatara has seen or felt or heard. Uh, Yatara. Okay, Granite Guts, roll inside them. Okay. Uh, you're paladin. Hmm. You have visions. You are just terribly unwise. <laughs> Wait, I thought you already had a nine. You rolled a nine religion and a nine insight. I did. Can you imagine? I can't. I can imagine a critical success uh, charisma save, though. Um. <laughs> Here's what you get with a nine. Uh, these sound like your visions, Granite Guts. You've had visions before. You you think connected to a god. You're you're having you're having these sound like my visions. Some people so, have them. I have them. But you don't get any insight into what could be going on with Yatara. Then. Yeah. So I, I basically say, yeah, um, th these some I've had visions before. Mine came from um, I was sent a message from the God I serve, and I'm not going to say that yours are from a God, but it's from some form I think of powerful entity, and um, I think you you you. Uh, I think you should take care. Yeah. 
but you, but Yutara, again, as he's talking, you hear something that is just so faint, but you can just hear this sound that goes beep, 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 and then beep, beep, beep. I mean, Leonard is game beep, beep, beep. to follow whatever this is if Yutara points us in the right direction. I can't hear it, but I'll go see what it's about. I'm going to attempt to try to convince the group that we are, I need to explore on the other side. Yeah. And, uh, Yutara, as you're making that convention, that convincing that you need to take the bucket across to the other side to see what it is that you're sort of picking up on, I think that's where we'll pick it up next week. I hope everybody had a really good time playing Ram of the Frostman tonight. Yes. Mm-hmm. That sounds mm-hmm. exciting. Awesome. I'm looking forward yep. to next week. Yep. All right. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it as well. All right. Well, you guys get to find out a little bit more of unraveling this mystery next time on Rhyme of the Frostman. I hope you guys had a great time, and I'll see you all next week. Uh, yes. Right. Thank you. Good night, everybody.